Well, all of this news comes as we mentioned earlier that Russia has deliberated, or Vladimir Putin rather, announcing in a speech today uh, that they aim to withdraw from a, a nuclear uh, deal with the United States. Uh, to discuss this further, I'm now joined uh, by the executive director of the Arms Control Association, Daryl Kimball. Uh, Daryl, can you just uh, expand more on the significance of what this announcement by Putin means for relationships with the United States? Well, the new Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty is the last treaty regulating U.S. and Russian nuclear arsenals, the world's largest. And for the last year, the two sides have been trying to get back to the negotiating table to talk about the implementation of this agreement. Uh, inspections were suspended uh, in 2020 because of COVID. And now President Putin has said officially that Russia is suspending implementation of the treaty, not withdrawing, but suspending implementation, meaning he's not going to allow for on-site inspections, data exchanges, but apparently will continue to respect the limits set by the treaty. So this is a very negative development. Um, it's not surprising. It also uh, makes it much less likely the two sides will be able to, to negotiate a new agreement before this agreement expires in 2026. And that would mean that the U.S. and Russia do not have limits on their arsenals for the first time since 1972. That's quite a serious uh, understanding of that because Obviously, without the uh, missile and ballistics oversight, uh, a lot of things can happen. Uh, what do you fear? Well, at worst, uh, the United States and Russia, if they don't negotiate uh, a new understanding or agreement uh, on their long-range uh, nuclear arsenals, they could double the size of their current uh, strategic arsenals. Uh, the current treaty limits each side to no more than 1,500 deployed warheads on long-range missiles and bombers. They could easily double that number within a couple of years by uploading additional warheads on their missiles. So that's the worst-case scenario. That would also probably encourage China to accelerate its already uh, worrisome nuclear buildup. And so we could be seeing uh, a global three-way arms race if uh, the U.S. and Russia don't get back to the negotiating table. And I would add that President Biden remains ready to negotiate uh, new arrangements to continue to uh, constrain the U.S. and Russian nuclear stockpiles. And the latest word, of course, is that the, the Duma is going to be deliberating on this. They are set to announce it on Wednesday. Uh, do you expect any kind of pushback at all? Well, I don't think the Duma is going to push back on President Putin's uh, decision. This is a, a pro forma briefing by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, Russia uh, is trying to uh, ex explain away this decision not to implement the, the treaty. Uh, it's not in compliance with its obligations. Uh, we will have to see whether Russia tries to increase uh, the size of its nuclear arsenal um, uh, in the coming months. Uh, but it's clearly not something that's in Russia's interest either. Uh, Russia does not want to get into an unconstrained arms race with the U.S. Uh, the already dangerous uh, relationship between Russia, the United States, and the rest of the world would become more complex and, and harder and harder to manage. And a solution, possibly. What would you uh, appeal leaders to do? Well, I think it's important that we see this as not just another uh, you know, effort by Putin uh, to, uh, you know, reject the rules of the, uh, the international order, the international nuclear order. This is a serious uh, step that will affect the security of every nation around the world, no matter where nations stand on the war against Ukraine by Russia. It's important that they uh, encourage Russia and the United States to meet their responsibilities on nuclear arms control. Uh, and I hope that in the coming months, uh, there's more pressure from Putin's uh, allies, the countries that are standing by him on the war issue, to act more responsibly on the nuclear problem. Thanks so much, Daryl Kimball, the executive director of the Arms Control Association.